um, so I am the currently the head of plant science in UCC in the School of Bees. And I also look after the first year uh, program. So I'll meet you once you come into bees. I'll be along with the other team members. I'll be kind of looking after the program. And um, I suppose that I want to just say some general things about the program first. And I'm going to be asking my colleagues Pat and Emer to jump in at every opportunity to uh, fill in any blanks, or if you think I'm forgetting anything. I mean, today's session, as Ruth said, it's it, it, the more interesting active the better because um, it would be great to hear about things that you would like to know that we may not kind of have emphasized sufficiently from your perspective or something like that. So CK404, so we're based in the School of Biological Earth and Environmental Science and I'm just looking here at the first year program. When you come into first year, you will take a number of different uh, subjects. So from biology to chemistry, to environmental science, to geology, geography, maths, and physics. And I suppose the idea of first year, and you probably all know this, but I'll say it anyway, is that before you decide which degree uh, stream that you want to go down and, and study for the remaining uh, three years after first year in UCC. The first year program is essentially to bring everybody up to the same level, because what we find in university is that not everybody will have the same subject uh, choices coming in. So we, we generally find that about, say, a third of the first year class will never have studied biology before, for instance, or, or chemistry or something like that. You know, so really the first year is an opportunity to, first of all, bring everybody up to the same level. And I suppose, secondly, to give you a feel for what different subjects are like because some of these subjects you'll never have studied before. And I think that's really important uh, for you. And I, I would always say, and I'm sure Ema and Pat would agree that within the School of Bees, all of our degree offerings are excellent. Um, they share many attributes and I'll talk about some of those attributes in a moment, but I would suggest to everyone who listens that you choose a degree that you're fundamentally interested in, that you like the topic, you like the material. So first year will give you an opportunity throughout the year to listen, to absorb, to engage in topics that you'll never have even thought of before. So it is really a great opportunity uh, to do that. And of course, um, and I know many of you submitted questions in advance and I'll cover and Pat and Emer will look at those as well in a moment. But I suppose one of the strengths that we would always say about our school in the School of Bees is that we run a, a number of field trips, residential field trips and day trips for students. And in addition to, shall we say, the joy of getting out into the field, this offers a great opportunity from a social perspective as well for students to actually get to know each other and to get to know the staff um, as well. And I suppose this becomes more important as the years go on because, and I know I'm skipping a lot of years now in between, but we'll come back. When it comes to your, say, third year, at the end of your third year, so around about now, our current third years are deciding what kind of independent research project they're going to do in their final year. And that's a project that's a, a really interesting opportunity for you guys when you get to that stage to work with a particular staff member on a dedicated body of work that allows you to carry out design and carry out your own experiments. Now, you'll have a supervisor that you'll be working closely with, but it's a real opportunity to get a feel for whether you really you know, love lab work or field work or, or whatever. So you'll be, like I say, you know, designing your experiments, collecting your data, analyzing your data, writing it up as a proper report, and then presenting that report to the school or you know within a committee format um, at the end of your six months and you know it's a really exciting time in, in a young person's life because you get to work probably in many cases within teams so you get to work with scientists experts in an area and by that stage and um, I'm sure Emer and I'll, I'll stop now and let Emer and Pat come in but by that stage you you probably will have you know a real love for the subject and you know people get very kind of what's the word protective about their project and you know their ups and downs in doing your own I see Emer smiling so I know she agrees uh, ups and downs in, in doing your research things go right things go wrong and you really develop this kind of um 
you know, this affinity for the subject and it becomes your own and you love it. And, and then you decide after that what it is you'd like to do. Now, I know I've skipped over a lot of stuff, Emer, but I will come back. I'm thinking of the bads, but I'll come back to first year in a moment. Do you guys want to jump in with anything at all in relation to the programme? And then I'll come back in again. I suppose just to very quickly, hi, everybody. Um, um, Ruth introduced me, Pat Mir is my name. Um, and I'm actually the head of geology um, in, in the school. And I think that's important. Barbara just mentioned, um, we were quite a, there's quite a variety of degree outlets you can you can uh, take, um, a degree paths uh, you can take when you, when you come into the School of Bees. The really cool thing is you try and you get a flavor and Barbara will, will talk about this in a second. You'll try all of them uh, in first year. So one, it's bringing everybody up to like a, a common level in terms of the kind of basic science skills that you'll need. But two, it's giving you a flavor and a taste of the different uh, programs that are there. So don't feel that you're locked into or that you need to have a decision made as to what degree you want to do within the family of degrees that we have here at the school. You can you have free reign, as it were, after first year um, to move into a particular degree stream. So I think that's an important point to, to make. Ash, just while you have the floor, would you yeah. say something about the Erasmus program? Um, yeah, because so you, you, you look Erasmus, after that. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm responsible not just for Erasmus, but for all international mobility uh, in the school. We strongly encourage um, student mobility. When I say student mobility, that normally occurs um, or happens in year three that you, you, you spend a semester or a full academic year. And we, we have people doing both abroad. We've got a family of universities in Europe that we're formally linked to. So places like uh, Utrecht, Wageningen, um, Bonn, um, to name a few. And then we've got a, a, a number of universities that we've established links within the US. Um, uh, places like University, we have a, a strong relationship with the University of Montana, um, uh, University of Maine, um, uh, West Virginia, these are just, I'm just giving you a couple here to give you a flavor of the type of places that we have links with. And so we've established links. And so people, there are staff over there that will are, 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 are used to uh, working with UCC students uh, over the years. And beyond that, we have links with the University of Singapore. Uh, and we're looking into even the possibility now of looking at some links with Australian universities. So it's an important, it looks great on a CV. It's a fantastic experience uh, and particularly if you're if you're cork and cork based to get outside you know what what is arguably your comfort zone in terms of your, your education uh and try out something and it looks as i say it looks great on the cv employers really like to see that uh individuals have had the if like the wherewithal they get up and go to 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 mobilize and get some experience abroad uh so something we strongly encourage and we're seeing growth in that quite significant growth so let's 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 hope that continues Mm. And it's great, Pat, in terms of networking, um, that Erasmus scheme, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, even projects, and we've got some people, you mentioned about the projects, Barbara, bear in mind this is happening in year three. Some people stay on yeah. uh, at one of these institutions to do a project. Um, we've had people staying on, for instance, in the States and the University of Montana to mm. do their field projects, particularly in, in the geosciences um, uh, for, for, for that summer and then coming back the following autumn to, to pick up their fourth year in Cork. So mm. yeah, it's a great, great networking opportunity. And at the moment, Pat, we have we had a Spanish student in our grouping this year, and she's applied to stay on and work with my researchers over the summer um, oh, to get some to get some experience before she goes back yeah. to Spain. So, you know, loads of opportunities come out of all of these kind of networks. And, yeah. you know, and as you go through the years, we'll guide you at particular times of the year, what's coming up and when to apply and, and all of that kind of thing. So it's really fantastic. Emer, could I encourage you to join in and talk? Yeah, sure. I was thinking, what else can I talk about? You've talked about everything. But um, hi, everybody. I'm Matt. Uh... Ema Rogan, I'm head of the disciplines of zoology and ecology. Um, and I was just thinking uh, as Pat was talking that, um, you know, we, we will talk about the courses and, you know, a lot of the courses are delivered as standard lectures with practicals. And then as Barbara's mentioned, there's field courses as well. There is the opportunity to travel. But one of the other things that we offer, all of us offer um, within all of our degrees is the opportunity to do placements. So there's an, op an option at the end of third year to go into fourth year to um, get credits for working with 
let's say, um, in industry or with different kind of um, job opportunities, like a lot of our students might go and do a placement in, let's say, Corfu or in Greece with uh, managing turtles, as an example. So the, it's possible to get work experience with and get credit for that within all of the degrees as well, which is great. And a lot of students take up that opportunity, but usually it has to happen in the summertime between the third and the fourth year. Um, and yeah, other than that, I think, you know, I think we all say this all of the time to all of our students. The most important thing is that you enjoy the courses that you choose and that you're, you know, happy to happy within your choices. So we have lots of flexibility and it is possible, of course, to move a little bit between the degrees as well. If, if you find out that you've started on one course and you, you think, oh, I've got that wrong, I want to change. So we have flexibility. I think that's the only other thing I'd like to say. Yeah, Eva, I'm going to prompt you to keep talking because would you tell everybody something about you're just back from Portugal um, on your field trip? And maybe Pat will say something about if he wants to about Greece or we talk about Ed's trip. But what about Portugal? What what did you do there and why? what 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 is that? Yeah, so the for both the zoology and the ecology and environmental science and environmental biology degree. Um, we have a, a week long course in the Algarve, so south of Portugal, and um, there we look at a wide range of different elements to sort of landscape ecology. We look at animal behaviour, particularly interested in a, a very unusual crab called a fiddler crab that has a very strange behaviour. The male has a much bigger claw than the, the female and does a lot of courtship using the claw to wave. And um, we look at um, kind of the different types of uh, seashores, the rocky shore habitat. We look at different, what we're really trying to do, uh, and ornithology is part of that as well, is what we're really trying to do is um, teach students how to conduct proper sampling in the field. You know, so how do you assess kind of habitat requirements for different species, or how do you have assess distribution and abundance? And all of these skills are important for not just for research, and of course, they're all very interesting questions in themselves, but also if you want to go into work like with for environmental consultancy, for example, all of those skills are really important. Um, so yeah, so it's a it's a it's a seven day residential course. We do a lot of field trips to different areas. We study lots of different habitats. And then in the end, the students do a, a very short group project that they write up. Um, so that's essentially what we do in, in Portugal. And it's great fun. And normally it's good weather. That's all I can say about that, I think. Yeah, no, that's fantastic, Emer. And as I said at the outset, all of the field courses, uh, residential or day trips, they offer a great opportunity, not just for the specific uh, uh, area you're studying in, but as a way to get to know people and to get to know the staff as well for future career development. Pat, do you want to say something about the Greece trip or even the well, Burren or whatever? Yeah, well, we, we have, and again, we have a, a residential trip. This is in BSc Geoscience, which um, is one of the, the degree programs you, you can opt into after year one. Uh, in the Geoscience program, we have actually residential trips every year. So year two, uh, we go to Dingle, the Dingle Peninsula, and we spend about a week down there looking at, at different types of geology and geomorphology. Year two, we go to the west coast of Scotland, to the island of Mull, um, and we spend, again, about seven or eight days uh, looking at some really, really high-grade metamorphic rocks and really cool stuff like that. And then I lead a trip in year four, which is the one Barbara was, was, was mentioned. This is to central Greece. And this is an area under, with undergoing active tectonics. So this is a seismically active area. We look at the faults that are responsible for the earthquakes. We look at the impact of these earthquakes and faults have on the sedimentary basins and sedimentary processes. We look at things like practical things like hydrogeology and looking at the you know the the role tectonics uh, plays in that. We spent a day looking at a recently active volcano, which is really cool because you can literally we can walk up and study the different um, levels with, within the the volcanic center. Um, so it's it's great. And normally I'd be saying the weather is always guaranteed good, but this year it was bloody freezing. It was cold and there was a wind blowing from the north and the poor students were shivering, but they still, despite that, absolutely love the field trip. So that'll tell you how popular it is. Fieldwork, just to reiterate what Barbara is saying, 
it's you know we, we talk about a common glue in the school that binds us together fieldwork is one of those things we all are big on fieldwork and and practical terms when you look at to what employers are looking for in students Fieldwork allows you to network, it allows you to, to, to make friends, but it also teaches you to be a little bit independent and, and a little bit self-sufficient. And, and that they, these are the type of things that employers tend to like to see uh, in, in candidates when, when they're interviewing people. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, Pat. Thank you. And my heart bleeds for you with that bad I, weather in Greece. I bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, just to say a little bit about the field trip for applied plant biology, which is another one of the degrees uh, in the School of Bees. And typically we take our students on a residential field trip to London. And in that case, uh, we take students to various sites that complement you know, the, the, the degree programme. So for instance, and I'm sure many of you will have heard of these places, we go to Kew Gardens. So we go behind the scenes and meet the scientists working in Kew Gardens. And that's a fantastic uh, uh, um, uh, space in, in, in central London. We also go to what is called the Kew Millennium Seed Bank. And where, where that's essentially a seed bank. And it's kind of, if you like, storing seed for lots of different reasons, not least of germplasm, uh, so conservation. So maybe seeds for the future, you could think of it as something like that. So in the Millennium Seed Bank, we always say, and I've got some nice pictures over the years of students going down the stairs into the vaults where the seeds are stored under specific conditions to maintain them. And when down in that area in the vault, in the Millennium Seed Bank, you're actually standing in the most biodiverse hotspot in the world given the numbers and the diversity of the seeds that are banked in that location. It, it may be not obvious because uh, you, you think you could think of more biodiverse hotspot, but that is actually the most biodiverse hotspot in the world when you're down there. We also take students then to an international company in, in England called Syngenta. And these are big agrochemical uh, producers because I'm sure we, we all appreciate that like it or not, we need agrochemicals to control, for instance, disease in our crops. We go from there to a family business that has we've seen it grow over the years that it's now become an international uh, business and they do plant breeding so tozers and we have a long association going back to well before my time dare i say and when i mentioned the 1970s i wasn't around in the 1970s but uh, there's a long history of association with that company and ucc because students used to go over every summer and work for that family business and i've got lots of stories from people from that time as well and then the last place we go is a place that i would highly recommend to all of you even people in geology past the Chelsea Physic Garden in central London, which was established, I think, in the late 18th century. And its raison d'etre, if you like, was to teach um, physicians about the importance of plants in relation to medicine. And just I'll throw in a fact at the end of all of that then. So all well, that's fantastic. And of course, the students love it for all the reasons Emer and Pat said about their courses as well. But about 25 percent of medicines that are in use in conventional medicine today come from plants. So that's why we go there. And, you know, it's a, re a really nice spot. I'd recommend to all of you, whether you're plant based or not, or plant interested or not, Chelsea <laughs> Physic Garden in central London. OK, so that's I think we've probably said enough about the field trips. Um, shall we pause for a moment and just see if there are any questions thus far in the um, uh, from the from the audience? Does anybody want to ask anything either via the chat? If I can find the chat down there now, yeah. Uh, and maybe Ruth, if you keep an eye on the chat as well. Anybody, any anything they want to ask? I'm not seeing anything as yet and no hands up. No, okay, so uh, maybe we're doing a great job, Eva and Pat, we're completely clear with our information, no questions. Right, can we prompt maybe um, kind of some well, we'll do some answers then, too, because I know some of you submitted questions. Ruth, Barbara, were you going to say something? Have, we just have one question from yeah. Jack. Could you expand on the Corfu Greece trip? Oh, great. Pat, you're back again. Come on. Expand on it. Um, so basically, it, it's it, it's a capstone trip. So it's it's we, we run that trip in fourth year. And it's all and these and and again, this is the same for I'm sure um, for for Emer and Barbara as well in terms of the pro, their programs, the plant science and, and the zoology and applied ecology. Um, it's bringing together hopefully most of the skills that you would have acquired up to that point in your in your degree. So it, it's an it's an opportunity to to go out into the world as it were and apply the skills that you've learned back in UCC to real world situations. In our case, it's central Greece. Um, and 
basically, as I said, I've, I've gone through the list of the things we do. We look at active seismic faults. We look at recently active volcanoes. We look at these big sedimentary basins that are now marine basins. Um, and then we look at the more applied aspects. I mean, we, for instance, we do a really interesting session one evening where we get a local person to come in and talk about there was an earthquake back in the early 80s. That person was in the town when that happened and he was he's excellent English and he was able to give the students a first hand uh, account, as it were, of what it's like to experience a, quite a and this was a serious earthquake um, and commenting on the practical things like the buildings and how they responded to that and the type of strategies then that local government adopted to mitigate against future um, issues and problems with earthquake damage. So they, they, the students, you know, because again, our our topics, our, our disciplines are very applied in, 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 in nature. So there's always, you know, it's, I think it's always nice to make the connection. It's all very well dealing with the science and the, and the theory of these things, but it's always good to, to see the application and see the, um, the real world, if you like, application of, of the science that we do. Uh, uh, and uh, importantly, uh, for the type of things you potentially end up doing yourselves once, once you graduate. Um, is there anything more specific than, than, than that? I'm happy to, to, to answer uh, any further follow-on question. There's a Hopefully. question in the in the chat, Pat, and maybe we'll pass it to Emer. It, it relates to all of us, but we'll ask Emer maybe to answer it. So the question is uh, from field trips: Are there assignments based on trips going towards assess? Are there assignments based on trips going towards? Yeah, I know what they're asking. So Emer, will you talk about that then? Yes, yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> there are. I mean, for um, so we also run a number of different field courses, but each of the field courses <laughs> are usually what we call 10 credit modules. So they're a fairly substantial amount of credits. And um, most, most modules are just five credit modules. And as part of that, there are assessments. So usually for us in the Algarve, which is the one I gave the example of, you know, you would have, I think, three different assignments that you would write up kind of during the evening times from those, um, from the work that you did during the day. And then that project that I talked about, the group project, is also assigned and that probably has the highest weighting but you have a little bit more time to write that up and you write it you know based on all the data that was collected out in Portugal and then you submit that so yeah absolutely it's um in our vocabulary we would call that kind of module 100 percent continuous assessment so they're, they're, it's based on in, in our case four different pieces of assessment Mm, great, thanks, Emer. And generally, what we've we've done in latter years in London is that, and I, I think you do something similar, Pat and Emer, is that so we go away for say five days in our case, but we we meet at night after people have refreshed and have a debrief about the day's events, and then the students will work and write up their work. And the idea is that the work all be submitted by the time we return to Cork on the Friday. Now it doesn't always happen because the last trip usually is a bit of a carryover, but the idea is that the the work is all almost complete by the time you get back to Cork, but it's, re it's really enjoyable. And these evening sessions that we have uh, where we all sit around and discuss the day's events and then go back to work. And once the work is finished, we tend to go out kind of socially and that, and it, it's, uh, it's all really, all really nice. Yeah. Okay. So one of the other kind of question, we don't have any other chat. Uh, we no. have one okay. more. Oh, sorry. Um, I was also interested in it. This is Jack again. I was also interested in the sea turtles mentioned at the beginning. Is that a focus or is the trip specifically for okay. geology? Oh, I see. So no, this is something that perhaps I mentioned. So I was saying that students do placements and, and they get the opportunity to work with either non-governmental organizations or with industry or with government agencies. And so as an example, one of the ones that's very popular is to go to um, Kefalonia, an island off Greece, um, to monitor sea turtles. So that, as far as I understand, the students monitor the turtles, you know, who have egg, the eggs, look at the habitat, make sure that nobody is kind of disturbing the beaches, looking at things like the effect of light on the on the turtles and the hatchlings. So that's the kind of work that they do, and it's 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 run by a, a non government organization, and they take on students for placements every year. Is that, I hope that was the question that I think I answered the question. Yeah, I think so. Ruth, any others that I'm not seeing what you're saying? So, yeah, me neither. Um, okay, yeah, no, Josh just confirmed that's great. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, and then, amongst some of the questions that were submitted were careers. 
Um, this seemed to be a, 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 an important uh, question. And of course, it's important. Everybody wants to have a nice career. Before I ask my colleagues to come in as well, um, I will say all of our graduates get excellent careers out of these degrees. That's the first thing to say. And after that, I would say what I said at the outset, my advice would be to choose something you're interested in. It's going to be hopefully a long life for all of us and all of you. Uh, and you're going to spend a lot of your life working possibly now there's a lot of mobility obviously in careers these days but you know uh, if you can find something you really like doing then it'll never be a chore to get up and go to work in the morning and that's the truth and I, I think not to speak for Pat and Emer as I proceed to speak for Pat and Emer but every one of us we all seem to love our jobs and it's a real joy to do what we do that's not to say there aren't frustrations like in every job but really mostly we love what we do and it's great to be able to say that so hopefully you guys will find kind of similar inspiration. So specific careers, and I'll go first, seeing as I have the floor, and I'll just talk about um, a few of, I'll, I'll mention some names. I mean, there's a whole list of areas, uh, including the not so obvious areas where our plant science graduates have gone into, including the financial uh, services sector, maybe not so obvious. And I, I'll say based on that, and it's the same for zoologists or geologists, where people don't necessarily go into their obvious areas of, of research or, or work. It's because our degrees, all of them offer excellent, what do we call them, transferable skills. That means that our graduates can really segue into a lot of different areas. So not only do you get excellent training in the core discipline of your choice, but you also get excellent training in a broad range of areas, including, say, for instance, communication skills, because all the way through the four years in UCC, you'll be asked to do things like presentations. You'll be asked to do report writing and all of this you'll be given training to do. So don't be panicked about that at the outset. And the other thing in terms of data collection, statistical analysis, these are all really important skills in lots of different careers today. So you'll be well set as I say, to segue into different areas within reason. And of course, you have the opportunity to uh, say upskill, shall I call it, to move into a different area if that's what you want. You could do a bridging master's or something like that, you know. So, um, so then I'm just going to call out some of the people who I've collected and actually LinkedIn is excellent for collecting information on our past graduates. So we have Elizabeth is a recent graduate, Elizabeth Van Veen, and Elizabeth has just gone off to the Netherlands to do a PhD in plant science based research. Kira Bosong is an environmental researcher. Paddy Nash, who actually it was interesting on one of the field trips <coughs> one year to London, Paddy got chatting to over lunch to one of the people in Syngenta and he managed to secure himself a summer job that summer and ended up staying with them for a year. So those kind of networking opportunities are what come about from these field trips as well. So Paddy is currently <coughs> a, a biotech production specialist at Regeneron Pharmaceuticals. Donald Shields is back working with me. Uh, he's an Irish Research Council scholar uh, working with me on a PhD programme. Norma Beechner is Director of Additive Manufacturing in Stryker. Uh, Paulina Masterletz is a Supplier Quality Control Specialist and a Scientific Writer. Ben is a Team Leader in FMCG. John Murphy is a Senior Technical Support Manager in Biorad in the United States. Orla is a Chemical Analyst in Pfizer's and so on down along. I don't need to read through all of them, but I suppose I hope you get the general idea that as well as having specialist careers based on your discipline, there are also lots of excellent job opportunities in areas that you may not even have considered. So Emer and Pat, would you like to talk, because there are specific questions on jobs in geoscience and also in geology. I guess okay. Pat would like to answer that question. <laughs> well, that's the, that lobs the the ball squarely into my court. That's that's fine. Um, so again, I suppose geoscience um, is quite is very broad by by its nature because again, when we talk about geoscience, we're talking about things like um, paleontology, the history of life on Earth. We're talking about tectonics and and structural geology, which is what I do. So that I'm I'm a structural geologist. That's all about mountain building and about deformation and plate tectonics sedimentology study of sediments and then we study igneous rocks so you get a very very broad range and as as barbara alluded to that gives you um you in, in as part of that delivery if you like of, of training in these areas you get quite a lot of trans you build up a lot of transferable skills so traditionally um 
you know, people coming out with geoscience degrees would have gone into things like, um, say, mining and, and, and hydrocarbon. That's pretty much gone in, in terms of hydrocarbon. And the shift now has been quite markedly towards environmental geoscience. Um, so we're talking about things like hydrogeology, studying water resources, um, geotechnical work, study engineering geology, because geology and the, you know geotechnical studies are an essential part of most engineering projects. Contaminated land and and wasteland and that that whole side of things again is is a is a big area and it's it's actually quite um, you know uh, impressive right now. But in Ireland, not just in in Europe, but in Ireland, there's a huge demand for graduates uh, in these areas at the moment and. One of the, I suppose, ad additional advantages in, in, in terms of UCC as a destination, I guess, um, in our case, in the geosciences, we have a, what we call a vocational master's degree. So if you feel that this is a, you know, this is a work area, an applied geoscience work area that you'd like to work in, uh, well, then you can move in, you can do the, the there's a one year, very vocational focused, huge amount of industry buy-in into that. So we've got industry on what we call an advisory panel that really and they actually help deliver some of the material in, in, in that program as well so get people industry ready to, to move into that sector then we've got the traditional things like research and we've got good people coming on going on to do research we've got people moving into things like the geological survey which is like a kind of a government agency um so again there's a very and right now um, i mentioned mining earlier because we need a lot of these resources for a decarbonized future and economy uh, particularly in things like battery and, and renewable energies like uh, solar vortex and uh, wind etc these res australia is starting to boom we've companies at the moment coming over believe it or not recruiting um european and particularly irish graduates uh, to positions there in, in that sector so it, it's um you know, it, it's and I, one of the things I will say as well, and I'll finish on this, the, the type of jobs and careers that we're looking at now are a lot more, to use that, that word, sustainable, but the, but the, they're, they're not, the, the, the markets are not as, as, as up and down as it would be in the energy uh, sector as they were in the past. So these are much more stable positions, more longer term positions, and actually they're more family friendly positions and, and, and career paths as well. So we've got as many women as men, and it's important to, to flag that because again, there is a perception that geoscience or geology is more male focused not the case well certainly not the case in ucc we've got not only in terms of the student population but in terms of staff as well um we've got good gender representation and that's reflected in the workplace we've got some amazing women uh taking on industry leadership roles in this country we've got a senior for instance arab i'm sure you may have heard of it big engineering firm one of the most senior individuals there is a ucc geoscience graduate so yeah um exciting times for for for, for our sector in terms of career paths and options mm, brilliant pat and I, I would say given what's happening in the news and i'm sure you're all reading about it the school of bees would be the place to come to help solve some of the grand challenges that we face today and, and on that note we have a new module entitled grand challenges which has been a, a major success with first years this year emer there was a oh well emer maybe you want to talk about yeah, talk about jobs first and then there's a, a chat question there about blue biotechnology and marine biology but maybe first on careers what do you think yeah so i think i mean obviously i'm talking to three <coughs> outlets here but i'm so i'm going to be quite broad in my answer um but as both zoologists and ecologists i think um the depending on the specialization um students tend to go into either let's say becoming somebody who's focused on terrestrial in which case they would work with let's say um industry such as forestry even agriculture but also organizations like the environmental protection agency in their role as ecologists or zoologists and um, equally well there's a lot of um with all of the infrastructure development that's been going on that people who are interested in terrestrial might work with um the environmental consultancy specifically looking at that so the impacts of let's say building roads on that migration for uh, corridors, as an example, or in the terms of forestry, looking at the impacts of deer on, on the forestry. Um, but then obviously, I'm afraid I'm a marine biologist. And um, so, and I guess to answer the question, um, so a lot of people who are interested in marine would, would work with government organizations or um, semi-state organizations. So let's say, for example, the Marine Institute, some people work in aquaculture, some people work in fisheries. 
um, some weird people work on marine mammals um, and go on to do research. Um, but equally well, a lot of the people will also go into um, further research, will go into, let's say, do conversion courses to go into communication <laughs> science, so work in media like TV or radio, news, um, scientific writing, all of those kind of things. And as both Barbara and Pat said, I mean, we, we teach very specific skills, but equally well, we teach skills that are applicable to a wide range of different things that you mightn't even imagine. Um, so some students do go on to convert and become managers in various industries. You know, we've got people working with, um, I was going to say Guinness, but it's not Guinness, Middleton, Middleton Distilleries. Um, and so, you know, the, the skills and techniques that we teach are very applicable to a wide area and not just our own specific disciplines. And that would include um, numeracy skills as well. Um, so I think that's probably all I want to kind of say in terms of just the general gist of, of what people who come out with research uh, with, with degrees in zoology and ecology um, do. Specifically on that question about um, what what program would I suggest to someone who's interested in blue biotechnology and marine biology? Um, yeah, so in both, both zoology and ecology, we have a fairly big focus on marine, but we also offer a, a, an MSc um, after the four years of the program in marine biology. And as part of that, we don't specifically cover blue technology in, in the sense that uh, sort of looking at extracts of marine organisms, but we we have we cover a, a wide range of different elements in the in the course. <coughs> of the so I guess that's the answer. <laughs> yeah. Super, thanks, Eva. And can I just pick up on the biotechnology yeah. term because behind me. I didn't plan that. I just, when I logged in, I realized, oh, I have got a taxis behind me. But I work in the area of green biotechnology, if anybody's interested. And behind me is a tree that produces a very powerful anti-cancer agent called Paclitaxel. And it's one of the reasons why we need to protect our plants, for instance, because not all chemicals can be synthesized in a test tube. Either they're too complex or they're too expensive. So we need to go back to nature. And over the last uh, two years, a colleague and myself have just secured 100,000 from Science Foundation Ireland to just manage and look after and guide the public in terms of these trees that we have on our UCC campus. So it's all, all really interesting. All the areas are really interesting. So I would just encourage you to come to bees and then decide for yourselves once you're in the door. Um, Pat, I think this quest, oh, there's one other there in the middle. And if I get an offer for the course, what would you recommend to help me prepare for first year? Um, so, I mean, what do what do my colleagues think to prepare for first year? I mean, I Pat is shaking his head. So Pat, you go. I'm, I'm not shaking my head. I, I'm I'm I can see why you'd be maybe concerned, but try not to be actually. Yeah. Because you know you've the fact that you've got you've uh, done a leave insert and you've got um, good points to get into into a university course means you're more than good enough uh, to to do uh, to start and we start and I think um, we need to emphasize this we start from first principles. Barbara's already mentioned it's a, a significant proportion of our first year intake may not have done biology before mm -hmm. um, and yet they go on to potentially doing a biology degree. So don't stress about it we take everything in first year from first principles and that's one of the reasons the, the, the first year course is so diverse because it's giving people the basic platform uh, to build on a career a science career from that okay so my 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 quick answer would be you know enjoy your summer actually uh, <laughs> you, you you've just done a leave insert um, and, I, and I've got three kids in, in, in late teens, early 20s. So I'd be, you know, um, this is the last thing I'd be saying to them, but I'm saying to you, enjoy your <laughs> summer. And and, uh, and, we'll, and then get yourself ready um, to start what is hopefully an exciting career in UCC. Yeah, brilliant, Pat. I totally agree. And just to add to that, we do have students who might need a little bit of extra help. That's across the university, not just in bees. And so there are lots of support structures within the university to help people. And that comes from, there's a dedicated UCC skills center and they, they're great actually. We had them down with us during the year as well to talk to our first years. And they do everything from one-to-one -one individual sessions, maybe on a Saturday with study skills, with essay writing, they do the whole kind of plethora that you might need as a student. And it's just brilliant. And in addition to that, 
one thing that the college did a number of years ago was to set up this peer to peer learning. So we have students who will be helping other students, you know, so never fear, there will always be help at hand. And I suppose one of the things we say to first years on day one is that you must keep in touch with us because you, you, you know, different students struggle at different times of the year for different reasons, personal or otherwise. And so once you keep in touch, we can uh, help you. You know, that's the that's the main thing I'd say there. Pat, there's you a question to there. Your bods. Oh, and that's on yeah. prime opportunity to mention <laughs> bods, yeah. which John O'Halloran was was wondering about that the other night at the awards thing. Emer. But <clears throat> so about, I suppose we set up this or uh, not organization, but this grouping. And we were trying to come up with an acronym that would suit what we were trying to do. So we came up with BODS, so B-O-D-S, and it stands for Bees Online Drop-In Saloon. Now, I don't know where the reference saloon comes from. It just fit in neatly there. But anyway, Bees Online Drop-In Saloon. And I suppose it came out of the what happened to us all in COVID, where you guys were the same. You all went online. And so we were kind of concerned about our students that, you know, we, we continued with all our classes and all the rest, but in a very different kind of space. So we set up this uh, BODS. And so we had this dedicated session once a week, not at all obligatory, it was purely come if you want, don't if you don't want to. But we had a good turnout for most of the time and we organized extra kind of uh, fun talks as well. I got some of the students to, to, to recommend speakers and one guy recommended the chair of the dogs, Irish dogs kennels. Um, Irish Dog Kennels Association, or maybe you're familiar with this. And we had a great session on people just looking at nice pictures of dogs and him telling us about the breeding background of the dogs. So nothing really much to do with bods. Well, I suppose your area, Emer, zoology, but certainly it was a great, even the geologists enjoyed that one, Pat, as well. You'd be pleased to hear. But I mean, it was brilliant. It was great. So the idea is that it's, a, it's an area, a space once a week, a dedicated slot in the timetable that you can put in and come. And we had people just eating their lunch and drinking coffee while we all chatted away. And, and out of that then came a, a WhatsApp group for the first years, managed by the first years, nothing to do with the staff. We're not privy to that at all, and nor do we want to be. But again, it was a support structure where people would prompt other students when maybe things are due or just have a bit of a laugh or whatever. You know, so there's a nice community. And I, I suppose that's one of the things that I always hear, I'm sure you're the same, that from students, um, around the college is that there's a great kind of support structure within the School of Bees. We seem to have a lovely kind of atmosphere. Uh, I'm sure we help Pat and Emer, but, but generally yeah. speaking, there's a nice community atmosphere in the School of Bees and, and people do feel kind of looked after and supported and helped along the way, as long as people ask. Isn't that right? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. 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 OK, thanks for that prompt, Emer, on BODS. Now, where, what are we left with? Um, There's a Ruth. question for Pat on the pathway. Yes. That's pathway it. for Earth Science. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. I see that. It's Angelina. So hi, Angelina. Um, it's a good question. And, and um, it takes a little bit of answering because <laughs> and, and it's actually a lovely prompt for me to flag what, what's changing for geoscience and UCC. There were up to now, we would have had a number of degrees, um, geology, geography, earth science, which is probably what you're referring to, um, and international field geoscience, which involved going to the States for a while. Um, we've consolidated all of those into, you'll be delighted to hear, one single program, which we're calling BSc Geoscience, okay? So years one and two, year one is common to everybody in CK4 and four in any case, and, and Barbara's already outlined that. Year two, you start to specialize, but not too much, but you are starting to get more focused on the kind of the geoscience and environmental science as well side of things. And then in year three, you, you, you'll move into the BSc geoscience proper in terms of delivery of full delivery of geoscience modules. Now within that, um, you can take different flavors um, of geoscience. So we have three kind of flavors. One of them is um, paleontology, so there would be big, you would take some zoology modules as well as geoscience modules, and it would be a good grounding for, if, if you like, a career or a future in paleontology. Another one um, is geology, which is traditional geology, which is what I would have come from uh, originally. Um, and that's things like structural geology, petrology, sedimentology, the, 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 the range of subdisciplines within geology. And then we have what we call environmental geoscience, which hopefully kind of answers your question. And I know I had to go a long way around to answer it, but environmental geoscience is probably the closest aligned to what earth science was in, in previous uh, degree structures. So there's, a, there's some geography, um, physical geography, and obviously uh, focus and geology. So it's like a hybrid of, of, of the two. 
but these are just kind of flavors and themes and you've got huge flexibility within these three themes to move between one and the other. And you come out with a BSc, uh, a Bachelor of Science degree in Geoscience. I hope that answers your question, Angelina. Angelina, do you want to ask a follow-up before we move on to the next question? Or is that, does that answer sufficiently? I think it probably does, doesn't it? No, okay, Angelina is not. We'll wait and see, does she come back maybe? Okay, Quiva has asked here to everyone, can you defer your place? Yes, you can defer your place, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah, yes. I yes. sent a direct message to Quiva with the link um, for anyone who is given an offer and you're thinking about defer, uh, deferring your place, the one, the most important thing is do not accept the CAO offer and then get in contact with our missions office um, straight away and they'll follow on with the procedure. But it is much more streamlined process. It can be done if you accidentally accept the offer or you change your mind after you've accepted it. It's just a much quicker and streamlined process if you do not accept your CAO offer. OK, I hope that's clear. Thanks, Ruth, for that. Um, Aoife is asking, is it a full on course? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking there. So it is a full time course. Is it full on in that? Is there a lot of work involved? Yes, there is a lot of work involved. <laughs> uh, it's a very enjoyable amount of work involved. And maybe at this juncture, then I'll talk about the first year. Shall I do that in, in more detail? Yeah. Okay, so just for everybody's benefit then, um, as I said earlier, I'm the first year program coordinator. And so this is the kind of thing I'll talk to the, when, if I see you in September or whatever, that this is the kind of thing that um, <clears throat> I'll be saying to you again. So our, our, our year is divided into two semesters. So semester one and semester two. Broadly, the, the, the modules are, as we call each kind of the, the subjects modules within that, you'll do, 12 modules we'll call them okay 12 modules and they consist of subjects or modules like biology and um, chemistry maths environmental science geology geography and physics i hope i haven't forgotten anything there so basically what we try to do is we balance the workload between semester one and semester two so you don't feel overloaded okay that's the first thing to note so it is very manageable but we encourage you to engage all the time in order to keep the workload manageable we also encourage you to have a great social life but try and balance both if you can um and I think it's become a bit easier for students. I don't know what Emer and Pat would say to this, but because of semesterization, the students now have exams after semester one, which in when I was doing my degree, I'm sure it's the same for you guys, Pat and Emer, all of the exams were at the end of the year. So by the end of the year, you kind of forgotten what you'd taken maybe in September. So, but this way is a bit more manageable, I think, in that you're, the, the subjects you take between September and December are examined in December before Christmas yeah so and then you're done with those and then when you come back at the end of January or the middle of January you then start semester two and then you do your next block of subjects if you like okay and those uh, subjects are assessed I think the first exam was today um, and so the students have started their exams now okay so uh, within that then I won't go through all of these modules, but by and large, this is what the module looks like. So each module, say for instance, I'll talk about my own module just as an example, it's called uh, Cells, Biomolecules, Genetics and Evolution. And uh, generally that has 18 one hour lectures. So you come to campus for each of the lectures. It has two practicals associated uh, with it. And so the assessment for that module will be uh, an MCQ, so a multiple choice questionnaire at the end of the module that finishes, let me think, in October. So then we'll have you sit one exam in October worth something like 20%. Your practical, each practical is worth 10%. So that's 20% for the practicals in total. That's now 40%. And the balance of the marks go towards the exam in December, 60%. And just in that particular case, it's not the same in all of the modules, but in this particular case, the end of year assessment for that module is again a multiple choice questionnaire because it's a large, there are a large number of students in that class and, and that's the best way to assess the module. So that's just one example of how the modules are assessed. Um, Ruth, would the students have received a link to the calendar and the book of modules or does that happen at this stage? Yes, it's all in the prospectus, it's all linked, um, yeah. but I can follow on and put it in where you can see every yeah. uh, module, every year, every examination process and so on. So I'll, I'll yeah. pop it into the chat. 
do thanks Ruth and because it's really kind of clearly outlined in the on our system in UCC how each module so it's very it's very obvious how each module is assessed right from the beginning Pat and Emer, do you want to come in and talk about any other type of assessment that you're familiar with aside from say so I would do a lot of MCQs so what kind of exams do you guys run or assessment types I suppose from, from our side of the house um we 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 have we have a field course and, and again like Emer mentioned earlier that's 100% uh, continuous assessment so it's material that you would do and exercises you would do on the in the field and we we that first year field course is in the borough in North County Clare um a county that I'm from myself originally so a lovely part of the world uh and the other type of exam I suppose for completeness is we have a kind of a more traditional paper um, where you'd have it's typically an hour and a half for a five credit module it's an hour and a half sit down paper and typically you do two relative you know 45 minute questions uh kind of many or short essay type questions uh in in that so that's that that's i think covers most of of the type of ca are the if you like examination types yeah. that we would we would be offering yeah, thanks, Pat. Emer, do you want to add anything to that? No, I think certainly yeah. in first year, that's pretty much the kind of approach that we all take. It's either lab reports or something related to field reports or written exams. Obviously, as we go through the years, we become much more inventive in how we assess students. And sometimes you get to produce your own video, sometimes you get to yeah. do a cluster. There's a lots and lots of variations on you know how we teach and how people learn as well. So. Um, but but in first year it, it's it's fairly a fairly fairly standard because the classes are very big as well that's the other i guess the other thing yeah sure um, yeah um so okay so i think I've, I've kind of broken down the first year hopefully that's been clear for people i'm not sure i've forgotten anything there there is a question in the chat what does a week of college work look like in first year so a week of college work so as i said to you broken into two semesters and in semester one you have one two three four five six yes yes six a half of the twelve. so you have six modules in semester one so each of those modules by and large will have three lectures a week uh in the first semester but bearing in mind semester one you could look at semester one as two halves as well because um not to overcomplicate it now but many of your modules in first year are worth what's called five credits you'll we'll get used to the, the the terminology when you come in but it's in, some of the modules are five credits which means 18 hours of lectures x number of practicals if you have a module that's worth 10 credits it's double that and so it just looks slightly different but essentially the working what was the question the, what does a week of college work look like so you'll come into your lectures in the bool or wherever those bigger classes are you'll have your lectures you'll have tutorials in various subjects like i think it's chemistry and maths run tutorials and physics run tutorials so you'll go to those tutorials and you'll do worksheets and you'll have um demonstrators um there to help you they're very good at helping the students with whatever queries they have they run these extra sessions to help you um what's the other thing i want to say there and then you'll have lab classes um as well and so your labs would generally for the subjects would be about three hours long usually that would be the standard and for your lab classes you'll have to get your lab coat and your goggles or whatever the module coordinator prescribes and you'll come in and again in university we have paid what are called demonstrators and generally speaking these demonstrators will be students who are part way through their own uh, degree uh, no they'd be postgraduates isn't that right they're postgraduates yeah and so those postgraduate students would have covered the material <coughs> that you guys are being asked to do now and they are there paid to help you so they don't do the work for you and they don't answer the questions for you, but they're certainly there to advise you and to help you during the course of an afternoon, do you know, so I think that's really quite helpful. Um, I'm just I'm trying just to gonna add here. that I think most, I mean, most of the course, we're not nine to five every day and yes. we're, we generally don't operate classes on Saturday, got my fingers crossed saying that, um, but except occasionally we do a few courses at the weekends. Um, so it does vary from day to day and depending on what, you know, on, yeah. on, you know, where you are in the alphabet, whether you have a practical every kind of Tuesday or every Wednesday, for example, but uh, yeah, so it, it, it's, but it's not, it's not, you know, you're not sitting down face to face with us for the, the whole day, every day. So it is variable. So I guess that people do sometimes take the opportunity to do, you know, part-time work as well 
which I guess is, yeah. is something that you know I think we're all kind of coming to adjust to live with as well so it's not yeah. it's not full on I guess that was the question initially wasn't it so yeah, yeah. that's it Shima. that's exactly it and you know there is plenty of time for going for a coffee with your friends which is really important part of college life as well to uh, discuss the reasons why you don't like a particular lecture maybe or something like that I don't know and incidentally that noise in the background I have a pet rabbit who get rears its head every now and again so it's, it's that's that in case anybody's wondering about that noises okay so I hope that answers your question about the working week uh, come back if it's not quite clear Pat is this for you as well is it possible to do the course without doing geography Ooh, somebody not liking geography there. Yeah. Okay, well, Pat. Well, yeah. Absolutely. Um, geography is not a requirement for any for entry into CK 404. So, and like again, this is one example. Um, you know, Barbara mentioned earlier, we start from first principles. Okay. So you, you know, from once you're in and once you're you're um, up and running, uh, we assume little or no prior knowledge. And we 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 build you from from the from the base up in terms of of learning the kind of the basic concepts and, and skills needed for for the different uh, you know topic areas. So the the quick and, and easy answer is you do not need a require a, um, um, a, a required geography um, to to come into CK four hundred four. Thanks, Pat. And just to say that I'm just flicking through my slides here to make sure I remember to say everything. So Ruth has put in the links. To, so you can have a look at the book of modules and 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 the rest so you can have a look in more detail at each of the subjects, which is really nice and you can see how they're assessed. And the pass mark for each of the subjects is 40%. So what you have to do in first year is get 40%, get over the line and get yourselves into second year and find out what it is you actually really like about the School of Bees. The other thing I want to say here is that we in Bees are very active on social media. Um, I'm not sure it was the same social media that maybe all you guys are active on, but let's see. So, for instance, uh, we have a very active Twitter account. Um, and I don't know, that's maybe a generational thing, because I don't know if all of you are on Twitter, because anytime I ask the students, nobody raises their hand. So I'm on Twitter <laughs> and I know a lot of my colleagues are on Twitter as well. But anyway, check out our Twitter um, account, because that is quite active. Um, Facebook, I don't know who's on Facebook anymore, but bees are very active on fit. You are Pat. Oh, well done. Okay. So you can see what Pat is up to on Facebook. So, but bees in have name a very... only. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm like that in name only. I don't use it anymore. Not for years. Okay. And so we have a YouTube channel um, as well. But I suppose what I'm saying is as well, if you go to the website, um, just Google UCC bees, you'll find out loads of information there. In addition to what Ruth has put in, that will be more kind of on the main college website. But in Bees, we have a dedicated website that, you know, mentions all of us. It mentions our research interests. But more specifically, there's a button that links to current students. And you can see the information that's relevant to current students. And hopefully you will be one of our current students in the not so distant future. And the other thing I'll say, and one of the things that we have promoted over the last number of years and Pat and Emer talked about um, all the nice field trips. We've asked students to kind of uh, document their, um, their experiences on the field trips and they have provided blogs. And I know Pat, particularly I remember seeing, I don't know where did I see it on LinkedIn even, one of your students absolutely raving about the field trip in Greece, totally opened their eyes and blew their minds and, and all the rest. So you can read all about what students have to say about life in bees and that's all very well documented on social media so do have a look around and see what you can find by just googling um the school of bees at ucc yeah um i just like to say we just skipped two questions oh sorry um, ruth yeah go on i know they just came in so quick um what if you can't follow the planned schedule so i'm not exactly sure what that means so if we could get a bit more clarification on that question um, and then the other one is, are there extra supports for students with learning difficulties? Most definitely. Um, so within UCC, we have what's called a disability support um, services. And again, they're a wonderful unit. And they, um, when you come in, you can register with the, the DSS and uh, you'll be provided with lots of different supports, whatever your particular needs are. So absolutely, lots and lots of supports at central and at local level um, as well. And of course, peer-to-peer -peer learning. So there's a new message, Ruth. Is that explaining what that other question? No, that was me just putting in no. the link to our DSS link for to more the information. DSS. 
Oh, so yeah, great. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. So that's Sana, if I'm saying the name right. What if you can't follow the planned schedule? So Sana, we're not clear on exactly what you mean by that. So if you want to either unmute yourself or just put in the chat exactly what you mean, whether, yeah, well, I don't know. I won't kind of second guess. I don't know what's exactly meant by that. Um, yeah. Okay. So I mean, if you can't do the 12 modules in a year, can you go slower base like lesser modules? Uh, Emer, I'm going to very helpfully pass that over to you. <laughs> That's very helpful, Barbara. And the grounds that I want you to feel included there, not that I can't answer <laughs> that directly. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I think there it's they've recently introduced uh, an option that you can sort of fail if you wish to to describe it this way. Um, a is it ten credits, so two modules and carry that fail into second year yeah. and then repeat it in second year that's right it doesn't yeah, yeah. bolt your progression but it means that you have to to repeat the two modules again in second year um we don't really have to the best of my knowledge anyway any other options here i think it is as barbara said a full-time course so you are required to do the 12 modules or the, the, the modules to the value of 60 credits, which is equivalent to, to 12 five credit modules um, on an annual basis. Um, I, I think, I hope that's what you, I hope I'm answering the question and I hope I'm correct in the information that I'm providing there, but that's yeah. off the top of my head. I'd just like to right. add in if there is a medical reason or something else like that, if you want to chat to me offline, there is accommodations for that, but that is a totally separate issue it's not about splitting your year um, just to reduce the work great thanks guys and one thing that i think it's samantha has kind of prompted me to say so she says and i know ruth has answered it does the dss accept mature students but it's not about accepting mature students it's about de not dealing with but uh, meeting and helping students with whatever in whatever area uh, they can assist with and all across the the board um you know so actually our our disability support service is excellent i have to say in ucc but samantha what that has reminded me to say that every year we have a number of mature students in our course and um the mature students there's a various supports within the system as well particularly for mature students who have a different experience a different background coming in there's a mature student society which i believe is is very good and um maybe ruth i don't know if you have specific information but certainly there's a lot of information there for mature students um and maybe Emer or pat want to add to that i'm not sure but I'm, just, sorry go on, ruth. Yeah, far away ruth um, no, there is a huge support network for mature students and you've named all of the societies and everything like that. And you are given a mature student advisor outside your peer support leader and your academic advisor, should you wish to use it or not, it's automatically assigned to you on entry into UCC, no matter what program you're in. Same with DSS, there's no difference whether you're a Leaving Cert student, a mature student, a QQI student, you are a student. So all options and services and supports are open to you automatically. Yeah, brilliant, Ruth. Yeah, Pat, were you going to say something else? I was there? just going to say, as as a as a kind of a follow on comment, it, mature students add a fantastic extra element of maturity and experience to class yeah. and to teaching. Um, and we found that over the years, um, they have been you know because obviously quite a few mature students would have been out in the world and have been working etc. Bringing that back into a classroom with people, you know, say people are coming straight from from second level into third level, that's a, that can have huge uh, benefits and advantages. So we we greatly welcome um, and and genuinely appreciate uh, having uh, mature students as as part of the the overall student cohort. And frankly, I think we should have more. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think it's great. Yeah, Pat, that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else to say there. What, just maybe a final thing from me and then I'm, whatever anybody else wants to say. But just, I mean, I've mentioned our website already, but, and I know you're not in the door yet, but you're almost in the door. But one of the things I say to first years when I meet them in the September is that take a look at our website and the research areas within the school <coughs> of these, because all the way through, you can be thinking about what kind of really grabs you, what area, some of you have already asked about specific 
specific areas. But have a look at the, the breadth of research that goes on within the School of Bees. And remember, not just the three of us on the call, but all of the staff members uh, by and large in the School of Bees are research active. We'll have an international network. And so the possibilities, I think, are endless. And so the only limiting factor is whatever you want to do yourself if you're going to limit yourself. But other than that, the world is your oyster, not to be too glib about it, but there's fantastic, there are fantastic opportunities uh, out there. And I'm going to say, lovely to meet you all. I'll stay on just for the final goodbyes, but thank you for joining us. That's been great. But and I'll stop talking now. So maybe Pat and Eva want to finish off by saying something. I was just going to say the same thing. Thank you all very much for joining us. And obviously, if there's any questions that pop into your head, you know, when we close down the meeting, yeah. by all means, we're all available for email and I'm sure Ruth as well. Um, so if there's anything else that we haven't covered or like there's something else that you want clarification on, please do send us um, emails. Yeah. All, our in, all our email addresses are also on the Bees website and, um, and Ruth can certainly direct you to us if you can't find us any other way. Um, yeah. That's all I was going to say. And yeah, I hope you all have a, a lovely weekend. And I guess Barbara went to, to Ed Sheeran last night. <laughs> well, I'm guessing there's a couple, a couple of people else in the audience that are going to, going to go there tonight. So I hope that's that'll be fun if you do manage to get out. And nice see. weather for a teamer, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Pat, do you want to finish up by saying something? I mean, you guys, in terms of what Barbara and Emer said, I mean, I, I share all those those sentiments. It's lovely to 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 um, I was going to say see you guys, but I haven't seen that many of you. But it's certainly lovely to have engaged with you for, for yeah. sure. Um, and as, as Emer said, we are a pretty, you know, laid back uh, group of people and we're very happy to answer questions and follow on questions. Um, please, please ask those questions. Now is the time to do that so that you when you're coming and making a decision you're making an informed decision and, and you're 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 sure to be on the right track but you know you don't have to be sure either as long as you, you you're in the broad area as i said i keep coming back to this we'll, we'll give you a flavor of everything in year one and then that allow you time to kind of make a more informed decision uh, at the end of year one into year two so uh, don't get too stressed on, on that side of things good luck for those of you doing exams um as somebody who's I had three people recently come through the, the, the mill on exams. I know what it's like. Um, so uh, my heart goes out to you. Hang in there and <laughs> get out the other side and enjoy your summer. That would be my recommendation. Good advice, Pat. Really